This is Curtis coming at you from East Bread Studios once again. Gonna go over an unsung hero in last week's game of the Titans versus the Bengals. And in our modern world of media, it, it's really about telling stories and condensing everything down into the smallest and simplest terms to drive these stories. That's kind of washed away some of the nuance in, in everything we do, and especially in sports and especially in football. Or we hear guys who score the touchdowns, guys who throw the footballs. And, you know, even I have a tendency to fixate on these guys. But when you go back and you watch the tape, you know, you look at Burrow and he had his uh, 348. Uh, Chase had his 109. Very easy to say these guys were the big reasons that the Bengals won. And, you know, it's a, it's a fair case. But when you look at DJ Reader, his game, it doesn't easily translate in a stat department. I think he had six tackles, five solo, one assist, and two tackles for loss. It doesn't look great. And it's very hard to translate that to fans. So what I'm going to do here today is dig into the tape and show you that really, when you go over it, a good case can be made that Jeffrey Simmons and DJ Reader were the most important players on both teams and really the most impactful. And it was a game battling back and forth between these two defensive linemen rather than the quarterbacks and the offensive guys. You know, I understand points, probably the most crucial thing. But in a three-point game, these two guys played a major role. And they, and they really don't get the pub. Jeffrey Simmons had a lot of pub because he got the sacks, sacks pop. But DJ Reader, some guy, is a player that I've been, you know, covering the Bengals on and off since offseason. I wanted to dig into it. He was just a very intriguing player. And this was the perfect time for me to dig into it. So let's take a look at the tape and see what we see. You can see that Reader dominates play after play. Takes on the center in, in, in two-gap responsibility and just dominates it. This will continue all day. You can see here zone stretch run and just Reader just manhandles the guard who's a quality guard and just makes the tackle. Again, here, look at him one-handed, just dominating this guy and just doesn't quit. He's got a high motor, just uses that power to topple the guard and just kind of fold up that side of the line. Very impressive. Now, the zone stretch, and you can see Rita just got a little bit of a burst to him, too. He's not just a big guy. I mean, that was a nice little shoot. He's able to hold that offensive tackle with one hand and just ride down the line and make the play. It's very, very, very impressive. He had a zone stretch run, and he just collapses everything here and gets in on the tackle. And this, 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 I mean, play after play, you're limiting the Titans' offense, key offensive asset. This is just, he played such a, a huge role in the victory. And look at this. I like he has a little bit of rip and swim and a little bit of burst. He gets in there and he puts the hit on Tannehill. You know, I mean, he's not a pass rusher, obviously, but he's not just a dead guy using power. That was a nice little swim, nice little slip and rip. Good play, man. So again here, you see the slip and rip again, and he gets in there. I mean, he's not putting pressure on, but... You know, he's making these offensive linemen work. Again, look at this one hand. He's holding up the guard. I mean, he's controlling with one hand, occupying his outside gap, and then he gets back in and he just shuts it down. I mean, this guy's powerful. Look at this here. I mean, it's not pretty, but this wasn't a pretty play by him, but it was an effective play. So, you know, he, he gets in on a guard. And he controls the gap, and the play goes at him. You see all the pulls there, and he just holds his ground. Even though he's fallen, 
he creates a mess and forces the running back to have to bounce back to the opposite side. Now, this turned into, you know, a pretty good run, I believe. But still, he did his job. Goal line here. You see, G falls down. <laughs> and like, not pretty, but he's in on that tackle. If you, if you take a look at it again, if he's not there, I mean, the running back could have possibly leaked much closer to the end zone or maybe even flopped into the end zone. So there's no one's really got him here. But it's Reed on the ground tripping up the running back. Nice, nice hustle play. Again, he's got the double control of one guy with one hand and just gets it in. And another hustle play. Takes that arm and swipes the running back's legs. Big part of that stop. This is where there's the, this is the big run play. And immediately they're doing zone stretch. And he's shutting things down. I mean, they're trying to ride down the line, and he's got his hands on the guard, and he's jamming him back into the flow of the offensive line. It's exactly what, I mean, that's a wrecker. He's got two guys on him, another guy lurking around, and the running back just makes a great read and great run. But Reed did an excellent job again. One-on-one, -on one-hand one control, and you know, just shuts down that whole double gap and then gets down the line and gets a little bit in on a play. You know, one downside I see to him, his balance isn't immaculate. Occasionally you see him, when a double comes in, he gets toppled, like, you know, that's, that's nuts, like nitpicking. I see it a couple times. Yeah, but look at this, it's totally dominates, lets the linebacker come in him and dominates that play. Again, you can see here he gets he gets knocked to his feet. His balance isn't immaculate. You know, it's pretty good for a guy that size, but it's like the only little problem I can see aside from like not being an elite pass rusher. Just a beast. Look, okay, so he gets doubled here. And he that's pretty good balance though. Riding down the line, doesn't fall. So it's not like he doesn't have balance. I mean, it's just a nitpick on it. But overall, when you get this kind of stuff, boom, look at that. I mean totally dominates the Titans offensive line. This forget about it. Forget about it. What a great day this kid had. Uh, you can see the Titans, as we all know, I mean, Tannehill had some good games with Derrick Henry gone. Foreman played really well at times in replacement, but this was a run centric team. And the running attack didn't go where the Titans and Titans fans had hoped. And the majority of that was because DJ Reader was a wrecking ball. The Titans have a very good offensive line, especially in the run blocking department. So what DJ Reader did, what you saw on that film, was nothing short of spectacular. But it's very hard to translate that to fans, you know, in quick Twitter uh, uh, posts or whatever. You know, this is why sometimes these little rinky-dink operations like that I got here who can kind of do whatever and throw out some tape really has a place in the sports media. Where the big shows, they really, they, they don't get a chance to do stuff like this as much because they need to have big audiences and nothing drives big audiences like quarterbacks and big plays. This is one of the reasons why they made the rules to accentuate these players. But the heart of football is the line of scrimmage. And DJ Reader is a critical piece. Now, he might not be as much a factor in the KC game coming up because they're more of a passing team. DJ Reader, his abilities don't really lend to the pass rushing department, although there are some qualities there. But in this Titans game, he probably was the most important piece on the Bengals team to drive that victory. Again, the quarterback, they're important game in and game out. But DJ Reader is a phenomenal piece. He was signed last year by the Bengals, 6'3", 247-ish. Had a quad injury. He didn't really get a chance to shine and pop. But I think a lot of Bengals fans now, and I think a lot of football fans now are starting to understand how good this kid is. It will be very interesting to see this week against KC 
what kind of impact he can create. If he can generate that pass rush, if he can hold his ground and destroy the pocket enough to really get to Mahomes. But Bengals have found a great player here. This guy can stay healthy. He is a steal and a wonderful player to watch on film. Gonna do a Jeffrey Simmons study of this particular game as well to combine them, to have bookends to really understand the game because it was a phenomenal game. It really was what football is all about. So Bengals fans, you should be very proud of your organization to pull this guy in. And uh, you're very lucky. And same with Titans fans with Jeffrey Simmons. But that's for another day. This is Curtis saying thank you for staying to the end. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Comments mean the most. I, I really, really enjoy comments, talking back and forth. I get to learn. I get to interact. Subscribes and likes, they help us with the Google overlords. You know, the, this is a show and we got to generate something in order to stay in business. And the Google overlords are powerful. So subscribes and likes really help. Please subscribe and like. This is Curtis saying, thanks for staying to the end. Catch you next time. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebred.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.